All right, so now you have an object. You've got a property that changes depending on the heat flow. It's going to tell you about the temperature. Now you need to define a temperature scale. So you need some reference points okay. <coughs> to be able to tell you, okay, this temperature is 550 degrees Smith, whatever, right? So you assign values to very specific states of matter and call those the reference points for your temperature. For instance, freezing of water or boiling of water, the, 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 st the standard ones. And then an interpolation scheme. How do you, you, you need a functional form that connects the value at one state of matter, the freezing point of water, to another phase change, the boiling point of water. You can choose uh, a linear interpolation or quadratic, but you've got to choose it. And it turns out not to be so easy. And if you go back in the 1800s when thermodynamics was starting, there were a zillion different temperature scales. Everybody had their own favorite temperature scales. The, the one that we're most familiar with is the centigrade or Celsius scale, where mercury was the substance, and the volume of mercury is the property. The reference points are water, freezing, or boiling, and the interpolation is linear. And then that morphed into the Kelvin scale, as we're going to see later. The Fahrenheit scale is an, is an interesting scale. Turns out the US and Jamaica are the only two places on Earth now that use the Fahrenheit scale. Mr. Fahrenheit, Daniel Gabriel Fahrenheit, was a German instrument maker. And um, the way he came up with his scale was actually he borrowed um, the Romer scale, which came before him. The Romer scale was, Romer was a Dane. And he defined freezing of water as seven and a half degrees Romer and um, 22.5 degrees Romer as blood warm. That was his definition. All right, two substances, blood and water, two reference points, freezing and blood warm in your human body, a linear interpolation between the two, and then some numbers associated with them, seven and a half and 22 and a half. Why did he choose seven and a half as the freezing point of water? Because he thought that would be big enough that in Denmark, temperature wouldn't go below zero. That's how you pick seven and a half. Why not? Right? Didn't want to use negative numbers to measure temperature in Denmark outside. Well, Fahrenheit came along and thought, well, you know, seven and a half, that's kind of silly. 22 and a half, that's kind of silly. So let's multiply everything by four. All right? Then becomes, I think it becomes 90 and uh, 30 degrees for the freezing of water and 22 and a half times four, which I, I don't know what it is, 100 or something. No, it's 90. Two or 90, I think. And then for some reason that nobody understands, he decided to multiply again by 16 fifteenths. And that's how we get 32 for freezing of water. And 96, in his words, for the temperature in the mouth or underneath the armpit of a living man in good health. What a great temperature scale, right? Turns out 96 wasn't quite right. Then he interpolated and found, well, water boils at 212. But, you know, his experiment wasn't so great, and, you know, maybe he had a fever when he did the reference point at 96, whatever. Turns out that it's not 96 to be in good health, it's 98.6, whatever. That's how we got to the Fahrenheit scale.